Hi, young humans. It's me, your old friend, Michael Shabon. And I'm here at the beginning of this story time to say today's story time went a little long. It's two minutes too long to be uploaded to Instagram. So I'm actually breaking it into two parts. So today's story, which is Shrek, is in two parts. And I hope I don't mess that up when I try to upload them. And I hope it's not too complicated to figure out how to watch them. Uh, in two parts. I haven't tried it before. Let's see how it goes. And if it doesn't work, I won't do this. <laughs> okay, see ya in one second for story time. Bye. Hello, young humans. It's your old friend, Michael Shabon, and I'm here for story time. And today, we're going to have another storybook by William Stye. Remember we had uh, Rotten Island, the one with all the monsters on the island, and then the flowers came. Well, this is a much better known book by him. You probably have heard of it. You might know the book. You probably have heard of the movies they made based on it. This is Shrek. Um, if all you know are the Shrek movies, this is very different in some ways than the movies, and it's lots of fun. So I hope you enjoy it. Shrek by William Steig, written and illustrated. Here's the first thing we see. Some snakes. And here's the title page. Shrek by William Steigen. You can see, see there's Shrek. He's a pretty happy guy. And his breath is flames. His mother was ugly. And his father was ugly. But Shrek was uglier than the two of them put together. By the time he toddled, Shrek could spit flame a full 99 yards and vent smoke from either ear. With just a look, he cowed the reptiles in the swamp. Any snake dumb enough to bite him instantly got convulsions, shaking all over, and died. Poisonous snakes would die when they bit Shrek. Look at that. He is sure not beautiful. But that's just on the outside. Wait till you hear what he's like on the inside. One day, Shrek's parents hissed things over and decided it was about time their little darling was out in the world doing his share of damage. So they kicked him goodbye and Shrek left the black hole in which he'd been hatched. Look at that. <laughs> There's Shrek's dad and mom and they are kicking him goodbye, sending him out in the world. They kicked him goodbye, yet not kissed him, kicked him. Shrek went slogging along the road, giving off his awful fumes. It delighted him to see the flowers bend aside and the trees lean away to let him go by. <laughs> he smells so terrible, his awful fumes, the plants get out of his way. In a shady copse, that's a small group of trees, like a little forest, he came across a witch. She was busy boiling bats and turpentine and turtle juice. And as she stirred, she crooned, This is the way I cook my bats, stir my bats, taste my bats, season my bats in the morning, stew and brew and chew my bats, diddle and fiddle and faddle my bats early in the morning. What a lovely stench, Shrek cackled. The witch specialized in horrors, but one single look at Shrek made her woozy. Woozies is like when you're on a room, dizzy, like you're gonna fall over. When, oh, let me show you. There's the witch 
singing to herself and making a witch's brew in their Shrek, <laughs> smelling something delicious. When she recovered her senses, Shrek said, Tell my fortune, madam, and I'll let you have a few of my rare lice. Splendid, crowed the witch. Here's your fortune. Achki pachki itchki pitch, pay attention to this witch. A donkey takes you to a knight. Him you conquer in a fight. Then you wed a princess who is even uglier than you. Ha 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 and cockadoodle, the magic words are apple strudel. A princess, Shrek cried, I'm on my way. And there's the witch telling his fortune in exchange for one of Shrek's rare lice. A louse, there's one louse, two lice, like mouse and mice. A louse is a little tiny bug. Gets in your hair. You might have had lice in your hair. My kids sure did when they were little. But these are special monster lice. Soon Shrek came upon a peasant, a farmer, singing and scything, cutting things with his scythe. Let me just show you. That's a scythe, see? He was singing and scything. You there, varlet, said Shrek. Why so blithe? That means happy, carefree. The peasant mumbled this reply. I'm happy scything in the rye. I've never stopped to wonder why. I'll hone and scythe until I die. But now I'm busy, so goodbye. He's pretty scared. You might be scared if you saw that coming out of your wheat field. If you had a wheat field. Maybe you do have a wheat field. Yokel, Shrek snapped. What have you in that pouch of yours? Just some cold pheasant. Pheasant? Peasant? What a pleasant present. The last thing the peasant saw before he fainted was Shrek's glare warming up his dinner. Shrek ate and moved on. Look what Shrek can do. His angry glare. A glare is like an angry look. It's so powerful it can heat food almost like a microphone I'm sorry a microwave oven and here is the peasant who fainted he's not dead don't worry wherever Shrek went every living creature fled ran away how it tickled him to be so repulsive it's that thing about Shrek he likes being just the way he is and so he enjoyed life. Meanwhile, look, like everyone else is running away. Okay, so that's the end of part one. If you want to find out what happens when Shrek meets thunder and lightning, go on to part two and I will see you there.